Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I've got an exciting Jumbo update for y'all today. If you've kept up with some of the updates that we've done so far, uh, one of the things I did was I actually got a real boat trailer, and this has been an amazing upgrade. It's just made the experience a lot better. And then a little while back, we upgraded the two horsepower Honda to a 10 horsepower Evinrude outboard, which is currently uh, covered up, but that has been awesome. But today I want to focus on what I did on the inside and that one of those things is I extended the casting deck. Now, if you'll remember, if you watched the previous videos, the casting deck originally was just this board right here. It came back to this line and then went up. So that's all there was. And then this pedestal seat was right here. And I'm a moderately tall person. So whenever I sat down on it, my feet would kind of hang over this or kind of sit on the edge and it wasn't super roomy. But I kind of designed it that way because I had originally pictured three people fishing off this boat. And so under this board, there's a middle kind of seat, like a, a green bench seat. And I had one of those seat brackets on it. And then there was a little boat seat right there. So you could have one, two, and then three. However, I started doing some math on the weight of this boat. And I looked at the capacity sticker. And this boat is weighted for 480 pounds. That's people, motor, and gear, and that's counting a five horsepower motor. Now, I've got a 10 horse on there, which is quite a bit heavier, and I've got a lot of extra add-ons. So the gear, the trolling motor, the plywood, the gas tank, the battery, there's a lot of weight on this boat. Uh, cooler as well when I go fishing. So that really started to weigh it down, and with three people, it just was not gonna do nearly as well. So with that in mind, I went ahead and I wanted to do a budget deck extension. So what I did was I got a long piece of scrap plywood from my boss. I cut it in two and then laid them long ways or sideways next to each other. And I moved the seat back about 10 inches. I did put a little hatch. I found some hinges and a couple little latch pieces laying around in the garage. It's still got the flooring from the middle seat but I put like my PFD and then a net in there for now, but I can put a lot more in there. And it latches. It's nothing too fancy. It's not carpeted or anything, but again, it was supposed to be budget and it really was. I did have the paint and the water seal left over from when I did this project. When I painted that for the winter. So I didn't have to go buy any more of that. And I, like I said, I had the hinges laying around and I used some screws that I bought, but not a lot out of the box that I got. So it was pretty, pretty minimally cost-wise. I didn't have to spend a whole lot of money, which is the main goal. And I haven't water tested it yet, but I'm excited that there's a lot more room up here. And whenever I went fishing with somebody who didn't know how to use the outboard or the trolling motor, we'd have to switch off every time. Like we moved to a spot and then started to fish. So now, instead of having to crawl through all that and kind of step up, you just step down into the middle of the boat, and then this person steps up. So hopefully it'll help with that a little bit. Like I said, it hasn't been water tested yet, but I'm pretty optimistic about it. Another thing you may have noticed is we now have a foot pedal trolling motor, which is something I've wanted for a long time. We did have the transom mount, that little smaller Minn Kota, that screwed in right there. You can still see the holes, haven't covered them up yet. That was an Endura C230, so it was a 30 pound thrust uh, transom mount. So basically you just operated it with your hand, a tiller handle. And then I saw this Motor Guide X3. It's a 40 pound trolling motor, 12 volt, so I can run it off one battery. And I saw this for $175. And I just, I really couldn't resist it. I'd wanted one for so long. Uh, the only thing is it's a longer shaft trolling motor so on a john boat this is a little bit long it hangs down pretty low so i have to raise it up pretty far but other than that no major complaints uh, it is it does make it a little bit difficult to screw the foot pedal down since this is up so far it takes a lot of that slack with it but i'll look at a solution for that and i may make a video on that but i mounted it on just some scrap two by sixes i had uh, shift one there. I need to repaint that, but it goes over the front a little bit. If you don't put it over the front, it hits. But basically, installing that was free. Just use some scrap screws, 
they go up through the bottom. So there's like, I think 10 screws going through the bottom. They're longer screws that kind of hold that in place. So that's been a major upgrade. And like I said, I haven't water tested it, but I'm super excited about it. And I think it's gonna pull this boat pretty good because it's just a 12 foot boat. And that trolling motor is kind of designed to go on a bass boat. It came off a 16 foot bass boat. So I think it should do pretty good. And like I said, since it's 12 volt, it can run off one 12 volt battery. I did not want a 24 volt. So you have to get two batteries and I did not want to add more weight because that battery I believe weighs about 60 pounds. It's a, a 27 DC Walmart battery, but that thing is heavy. So that's been an exciting little addition. And then as I'm sure you noticed, it now has an alligator painted on the side. Shout out to my mom for that. That's been a cool little project we did was the alligator. Now I'd seen some designs of where like the old World War II planes had the shark face painted on them. And I really liked it. And I was going to do that. And then at my local lake, I saw somebody that had a shark design painted on their boat. And it was really, really cool. It was a little, it was actually a big John boat, but it was a John boat. And it looked really, really good. But I wanted mine to be different, and this whole boat's kind of different from the normal John boat you see. So I decided to go with the alligator. I got some outdoor exterior paint from Lowe's, just some sample colors. And I will make a video on what paint I got and how I used them to paint this, or actually my mom painted it. But I also spray painted it with clear coat. So if anything does happen, hopefully the clear coat will help. And it is on both sides there, as you can see. So I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks really cool. Uh, it kind of makes the boat stand out a little bit, you know, adds another aspect of just originality to it. When the boat's in the water or somebody in the front, the water line kind of comes along here. But then when you're going, it kind of looks like it's coming out of the water. So it's a really cool little combo. And it does pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, I may do a water test video on the additions once I finally get on the water and get some time. But I'm super happy with it. I'm super excited about it. Uh, I even added a scrap 2x4 between the plywood and the seat so it looks kind of flush there. And I painted that too. But yeah, guys, that's the Jumbo update. Um, I'm losing my voice a little bit. I've talked a lot today at work, so forgive me if my voice was in and out there. But yeah, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Uh, like I said, I try and answer all my comments. And if you want to see a video or a certain video made, I will be happy to make one. Uh, just let me know in the comments. That's the only way I can find out. So feel free to let me know. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate y'all watching.